It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. When President Trump fired FBI Director James Comey on Tuesday, he justified the firing, saying Attorney General Jeff Sessions recommended sacking Comey because of FBI's mishandling of the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server. The second reason that Trump hinted at is that the FBI's investigation of his campaign's connection with the government of Russia. There is also a third possibility. By firing Comey, Trump wanted to prevent another FBI investigation into his connections with the Russian oligarchs, perhaps to counter this hypothesis that uh, Trump's tax attorneys released a letter back in March saying that Trump's income tax filings show no connection to Russia, with the minor exception that he was paid $95 million by a Russian billionaire, Dmitry Rybolovlev, for a Trump-owned estate in Florida. And another connection is a $12.2 million in payments in connection with the 2013 Miss Universe pageant in Moscow. Joining us now to discuss Comey's firing and Trump's financial ties to Russia is James Henry. James is a leading economist, attorney, and investigative journalist who has been investigating Trump's economic ties to Russian oligarchs. Thanks for joining me here, James. Good to be with you. James, what about that third possibility that I mentioned with Trump's connection to the Russian oligarchs? You and I have talked about this, the, the purchase of the uh, Trump estate in Florida by a Russian oligarch and him having paid $95 million. Give us this connection and uh, more details about other Russian dealings he's had. Well, I think there's a number of Trump business uh, ventures like the Trump Soho and Midtown, uh, the Trump Tower in uh, uh, Toronto, um, you know, the Ocean Club in Panama, where he has accepted uh, investments on behalf of people who have uh, deep ties to organized crime and uh, you know, a history of dodgy business practices. It isn't always Russian. Sometimes it's, uh, as we saw in the Dutch TV documentary uh, released by Zembla this week, uh, that you know there were uh, Kazakhstan kleptocrats involved in investing alongside Trump, uh, but uh, you know the issue is not does he get money, uh, uh, does he have investments in Russia? Uh, it's perfectly true that uh, he doesn't uh, have very substantial uh, economic investments there. But the point is that uh, for his most important projects, most of which have failed. He was very dependent on this tidal wave of flight capital and dirty money that flowed out of the former Soviet Union, countries like Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, uh, uh, Russia itself. And, uh, you know, the, ca the case of the uh, Miami apartment you mentioned, or the uh, Miami acquisition, that was with uh, an oligarch who was trying to move money out of Russia, and he paid uh, about twice what Trump had paid for this property in Palm Beach, just conveniently at the time when Trump was having a lot of economic troubles in 2008, and the real estate market in the United States was already falling, so it's very hard to, to understand that deal. That wasn't a case of a Russian mobster, it was in a case of a, uh, an oligarch. So, I mean, the, 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 the pattern here that needed to be investigated, and the Congress has spent a lot of time, I think, avoiding this issue, is this pattern of, uh, of dealing with dodgy business partners sometimes knowing that they were felons, knowing that they were uh, organized crime types, as in the case of Bayrock LLC um, in New York, uh, and, you know, and allowing uh, Trump to basically uh, effectively uh, operate as a kind of money launderer for these people. Now, James, do you see any evidence uh, from what you have uh, learned and unraveled and, and read about in documentaries out there? Is there any evidence for FBI investigation into this? Uh, do you think that, there, uh, that this was somewhat already underway or Comey was looking into it and that's why he got sacked? I would be surprised if he wasn't looking at some of this material. It's quite... Uh, 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 important and salacious, and the statute of, law, uh, of limitations for money laundering uh, goes back 10 years. Uh, that being said, we just don't know. There was supposedly a grand jury meeting in Virginia. Uh, you know, there were subpoenas that were about to be issued. 
I mean, I think if the president really wanted to put this uh, matter behind us, and I think quite a few Americans would be quite happy to see it go, uh, including me, who have been, you know, I want to get back to investigating other economic issues. Um, you know, the, the way to do this was not to fire, uh, uh, first of all, Sally Yates, uh, who is uh, doing a great job as deputy attorney general, and then uh, this, this week's firing of Comey, who all the FBI agents I talked to say was the best FBI director in years. He was restoring morale. He was very involved with going around the offices and empowering the local agents. I had a lot of respect from the agents, and many FBI agents are just completely uh, uh, flabbergasted that he was treated so poorly. But if Trump had really wanted to put this behind him, he would have been saying, go ahead, you know, I'll make my uh, staff available to you. You know, everybody will be testifying before Congress. We'll have, uh, you know, but that's not what we're seeing. So this guy is behaving like a mad king who's just afraid of what uh, uh, the Comey investigation would have produced uh, and is trying to stonewall the, uh, the congressional investigations. And I think that that's not healthy for the United States. Right. Now, you yourself said you're ready to move on, uh, and yet there's about five congressional committees looking into this issue further from what I see, Senate Intelligence Committee, the House Intelligence Committee, the Senate Judiciary Committee, the House Judiciary Committee, the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. They're spending a lot of time and energy looking into this, but uh, do you think that these investigations will continue? You, or will it be stopped with Cormie's firing? I don't see the Democrats backing off this issue. I think they've managed, the Republicans have managed to make it an issue for the 2018 election. Uh, it would have been in principle if there was really nothing going on here. I mean, maybe Trump just had a few bad apples in his campaign staff and they were, you know, uh, having some uh, bad conversations with Russia. But, you know, if that's, uh, you know, the more this goes on and the more there seems to be a kind of obfuscation on the part of the administration, uh, you know, it's not going to be possible to put this aside. And, you know, there's more, new, more stuff coming out just uh, every, every day uh, about uh, his business dealings. Uh, you know, the, what I'm surprised at is to some extent the fact that the leading investigative documentaries on, these, on this material have been done by uh, Dutch public television uh, by the German uh, public television. They have a great documentary coming out this month. Uh, the BBC has done some outstanding work, uh, but we haven't seen the kind of investigative uh, journalism on the part of the American uh, broadcasting networks that we'd like to see. So, uh, you know, that's an important constituent in this. And now that we don't have Congress able to really complete its investigations uh, because of the deadlock in, in Congress, uh, it's going to be very important for investigative journalism to come back into play here. Right. And then, um, of course, you know, Trump was doing business in Russia. Um, and in that clip I was showing you, he claimed he had actually nothing to do with Russia. This is so such a misleading uh, the American public. Why is he doing that? Why doesn't he just come out and say, yes, you know, he was a businessman. He had real estate dealings. He's done business in, in Russia. And he's had several um, trademarks, as we've talked about, um, so he's, underway and pending in yeah. Russia. I mean, the key things that he's done have been with Russian money. That's what I said, outside of Russia. That's, that's the big... He certainly did pursue business in, uh, inside Russia and the Soviet Union. Uh, he had the Miss Universe uh, pageant in Moscow in 2013. Kind of a strange place to put that pageant, but uh, he made uh, $13 million from it. Uh, but uh, in all of the big projects uh, that he's done in the United States, we see, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, former Soviet Union flight capital and kleptocracy money pouring into projects like the Trump Soho and, and many of his uh, condos in, uh, in Florida, Arizona, uh, Chicago, the Trump Tower in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, there's no question that uh, he's benefited from that and profited from it. Um, and, you know, it's time for him to really come clean on this if he wants to put this behind him. After all, he was the one who introduced Russia into the campaign uh, last year. He was bragging about the relationship that he would have with Putin. And that sort of, you know, struck people as odd at the time. 
But since he raised this question, uh, he has a duty and a responsibility, I think, to stop firing people uh, if he wants it to, to go uh, away. All right, James, I thank you so much for joining us. And I'm sure this issue isn't going away, so we look forward to having you back. All right. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.